Let's welcome everybody, Rodrigo de Cavallo, for our second talk. Yeah, mocking gRPC with Proto GenMock. And uh, Rodrigo is a software engineer working with uh, Go for about one year, and he's the creator of the Proto GenMock uh, project. So, yeah, welcome. Thank you, Ali. Let me start by sharing my screen. Um, first of all, thanks, Robert, for the first presentation. It's very good. Um, my presentation is going to be uh, about Proto-C, GenMock. It is, um, let me just go first here to the um, GitHub. So a bit about myself first. Um, I've been working with Golang for about one, one year and a half now. I started coming from a Java background. Um, and the story about this Proto-C GenMock was um, we were testing some microservices and we also started using gRPC Golang in the company I work for, it's called Dean. Um, and we wanted uh, to, um, mock some dependencies that we had, other microservices that we had. And we have something similar for um, REST APIs, for example, that we were using. Uh, and at the time, we didn't know any tool that we could use for um, mocking gRPC. Um, later, we found some tools. We are not using this uh, tool that I'm going to present now. But I started thinking, um, it would be cool if I could generate the mocks for the gRPC services um, from the protobuf definition that we have. Uh, before I go into all of this, let me just uh, try to give a bit of overview. I don't know if everyone is familiar with gRPC and protobuf and all this stuff. Um, in the company, we, we develop microservices. Um, the internal services, they communicate with each other through gRPC. Essentially, it is a um, remote, remote procedure call framework. And the good thing about it, it works in any, any language, or I would, shouldn't say any, but many languages and many um, environments, different environments. Um, we define these services. We start with the definition from the protobuf, and which let me just show here quickly. It is a language where you define what kinds of messages that your services can interchange with each other. And also we define the services uh, themselves. From the protobuf the, that we declare how the services should behave and um, what, what is the, the interface of the service and what kind of messages they uh, exchange with each other, um, we have some tools to generate um, um, stubs from, from these um, protobuf definitions. I'll, I'll show one simple example that we probably, who worked with protobuf before, probably seen this, which is a greeter service. And this is what I'm going to use to show what I have here. So this is how we define a service using a protobuf. Um, we have a service called Greeter, and it has one RPC um, called Say Hello that takes um, hello request and returns a hello reply. This is the simplest, just for showing here uh, what I what we are trying to accomplish with this tool that I started creating. Um, the Say Hello um, RPC it takes a name. Essentially, the re response will be Hello the name that was sent in the request. So let me start here um, just showing the basics of this, and then I go to the tool itself. Um, let me just use the Proto-C. Proto-C is a um, protobuf compiler. It will take that definition that I just showed here. And in this case that I'm going to show, I'm going to generate um, Go code. And uh, that has the stubs for um, that we are going to be working with in this um, to implement the service. The I'm already using the plugin that I created here, which is a Proto C Gen Mock, which I'm going to explain a bit in a minute. But without using this plugin, we would get this 
call uh, Go code that defines um, like from the the part above. We have a hello hello request, um, which is a struct with a name and a hello response, which has um, just a second. Let me find here. It's going to be easier. Hello reply, which has a message, and it also has a interface here for the both the client and the server. Um, I have this code generated. I before here I implemented a simple um, um, server that implements that interface that was generated. Essentially, uh, what it does, I'm just going to run it quickly. It was running already, but yeah, I started the server that will be listening on port um, 50,010, and I'm going to use a tool called gRPC UI to just show what, um, when I call that server, what it's going to reply. So um, when I send a request to that server, let's say my name, for example, when I invoke that, it's going to return hello, Drigo. If I send any other name here, it's just going to respond with hello, um, whatever it was sent, right? Um, from this, what we would like to do. This is a very simple service. Uh, it doesn't have any other dependency. But let's say we had another service that calls this hello um, service that we are sh uh, showing here. Um, what the problem that we had at the time was how do we mock these responses in gRPC, requests and re responses in gRPC so that we can uh, first test these microservices and we are talking about black box tests and we were running the microservice itself. And also when we were running performance testing, we would like to avoid hitting you know, other dependencies, some of the dependencies that we couldn't rely what they would return. So we were mocking these responses. What I showed so far is just a normal gRPC. And, and what I started doing was create this gRPC Proto C genmock, which from the proto definition, it also generates um, a mock server um, that is ready to use. It was very much inspired by other um, mock, mock services that already exist. For example, they usually have some sort of API that allows you to configure uh, what responses you want the server to respond in when you get certain requests. Let me just start uh, show this quickly. So by running that command that I just showed previously here, let me stop this here. The proto C and I'm using the plugin here, which is the plugin that I uh, created. And that plugin, it in addition to the normal uh, Go code generated by the, the Proto CGN Go plugin. It also creates a Docker file, a main file that will start a new service, the mock service, and also all the implementation for the mock service comes in here. I won't go into the details of the, what gets generated here. I, I'll show um, by running, and if you guys have questions of, on the implementation, I will take questions later. So let's go here. This Docker file will, if I just build it, it will, um, I need to go first to the, where the code was generated. And then if I build it, it will have a ready to use um, Docker image that I can start and will be listening and serving. Uh, it's a new service that implement that, that, implement that um, definition that we have in the bottom of. Um, let me just get this service that is generated. It has two listening two ports. One of them for um, the management of the stubs, 
This is where we create the mocks, which I'm going to show in a minute. And the other one is where the service is actually uh, responding in gRPC. So this is a REST um, endpoint. The other one is a gRPC endpoint. Let me start this, and then I'm going to show both of them working. Okay. When I do this, um, the gRPC server is listening on port. By default, it is port uh, 110, but you can change this. And also the REST um, server is listening on port 1068. Let's show quickly what is this REST server. Um, so when you're creating, um, so far, if you make a, a request to this um, um, ser service, it doesn't know what to, to respond. So let me start quickly show here what it would happen if I um, do a, make a call to the gRPC server there. Um, so let me start the gRPC Y again. Now I'm listening on the port 110, which is the uh, gRPC port of the mock server. And if I make a request to that gRPC, it will essentially just respond with an error message for me. But let's, let's change that. Let's say um, that when I make a request to, uh, to with the name Rodrigo, I'm using here just Postman to, to manage these, um, to send requests to the REST endpoint. I could use curl or anything else you, you would like. Let me add a uh, stub, which is essentially telling that when the server gets a call to the greeter say hello, um, the type here, I'll show another type later, but right now it's a mock. And I'm telling the, the server to look exactly for this content here. So this one is very simple, it's just a name. So when it gets a name, uh, a message with the name equals Rodrigo, it will respond a success with the message mock hello Rodrigo. Let's add that. I can get to check what uh, stubs are there in the server already. So right now I have what I just created here, Rodrigo and mock hello Rodrigo. Now, if I go back to um, gRPC UI and send a request to that um, mock server that was running, I'll get the response mock hello Rodrigo. I can also mock um, error messages. For example, um, in this case here, I'm gonna send the name error and I want to get an error code four with the message error message mock. So let's do that. If I check again, um, what are the stubs that were created in the server? So I have the first one, Rodrigo, and I have this error now. And let's see what we get when we uh, make a gRPC call to that server. So now, instead of Rodrigo, I'm going to call error, and I'm going to get the uh, error message that I configured there, or the error response that I configured there. Um, a bit more about this error here. Um, if you're used to gRPC, this is um, based on the status dot the status. Um, gRPC message that is defined by Google. So you have a few codes that you can return here and the message is free. I'm going to talk a bit more about the details here because you can also uh, add additional information to the, the error messages. But so far, I, I just want to show you um, how you do a simple error um, message here, error mocking here. OK. Um, let me go back to my here. Um, another thing that I would like to show is, let me first stop my um, mock server. Remember that I have one real server, server 
listening on port 510. And what I would like to do is record um, the communication that I sent to this server. Um, the way to do this is, remember that I showed you here when we were creating one mock. I can also define another type here and instruct the server when it gets a specific request, it would, instead of return a response, it would forward to another server, uh, get the request and record both the request and the response. Let me, I have a, an example here with this. Essentially, instead of a mock, like I showed before, it is a forward. Now for the request, instead of a exact matching, I'm using a partial matching, just because I want to any, any message that I uh, received to this GR, RPC, I want it to be forwarded to, in this case, that server that I, I have running there. And I also said that I want the record to true here. So let's add this um, stub. Oh, sorry, I forgot one thing. I stopped the mock server before. Uh, the reason I did that is um, I was running that on um, a Docker container. And from that Docker container, I wouldn't be able to reach this server, which is running in my, my local machine here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start another um, uh, mock server that was also based on the generated code that I just showed you guys here. But now I'm just uh, importing the generated code here and creating new uh, greeter mock servers here. And I'm going to start the service. It will run exactly uh, the same as before. If you This was created by me manually, but if you go into the generated code and look at uh, the main code here, you see that it's it's very very similar to what we get here. So um, let me run this one. It will be listening again on um, 1068 is the port for the uh, REST API and 110 for the gRPC server. Um, Let's go back to Postman. Now I'm going to add this stub to instruct the mock server to um, whenever it gets a call here now, it's going to forward to this um, other server and record that communication for us to use later. Let's do that. We can check that I have another stub now, the only one that I have right now because I stopped the other server, so everything was there. Uh, got lost. So now let's show this working using gRPC UI again. Um, let's start with um, calling Maria. What I want to see is hello, Maria. Let's say I want Mario. Hello, Mario. So back to my um, postman. Um, I have another endpoint where I can get the recordings that are stored in the server now. So um, essentially what it does is it takes the method that we already we called that, um, that RPC, uh, record it as a mock. It's an exact matching the content, whatever was sent, in this case, the name Maria. It also records the metadata. Um, I didn't talk about this yet, but um, essentially this gRPC UI, it adds some um, headers in the request. This too will also um, uh, record the metadata or the headers that were sent here. And in this case, it also records the response in this case, it is a successful response, and the message is, hello, Maria. Um, if there was an error, it would also record uh, an error 
and the error message in here instead of um, the success. And I showed two, two examples, one Maria, the other one Mario, there, and it recorded low uh, Mario. Okay, um, so this is the recording. Um, but now you can, for example, if you want to use this to, um, uh, when mocking a server, you just need to um, make a gRPC, and sorry, make a call to add these stubs. These are exactly the, the same, this is exactly the same format that you would use here to add a stub. So now you can get those recordings and use them to, to uh, create new mocks on the, on the server. Um, okay, this is um, one thing that I still didn't show is when we start the server, um, it shows also for each method, each RPC that that mock server can respond, it will show one example of how the message would be structured. So for the case where we have like a, a enum type here, it would give you the, uh, the options in Piped like this. So you, when you're creating a, a mock, you would create a stub, you would use either one of them. And you see that it is essentially the same thing as uh, the stubs that we have been using here. But now it is just one example without any, any, any actual values here, just a structure where you, you can use to add stubs here. Um, okay. Um, I have two more things to show. Let me go back to IntelliJ. So, so far, um, I showed how to create stubs using the REST API. And this is, um, you would need to use some external tool to, to um, make this work essentially. Um, what I want to do to show now is you, uh, the generated code also um, generates a client to that REST API. What, what it does is allows us to create mocks the same way that we normally would for unit or integration tests in our Go code, right? So when I, this is from the generated code again, um, I'm creating a new remote mock client here, pointing it to my um, REST and REST port on that server that is running. And now what we can do is mock, is just the name I gave here. Uh, what I'm instructing here is when I call say hello, giving this context, and let me go back to the context in a minute, and giving this um, request, then I want it to return this response. Um, let's, one more example. Now the second one is when I uh, get a request with this name, Leo, I will return an error message uh, like this. Let me actually stop here and show you guys that it is just, I, I think it was, um, I started with just the rest way of doing this. And more recently, I added this um, a client that allows me to do this programmatically. I just I found when using um, similar tools that working with the JSON format here for bigger tests and lots of different tests, it gets a bit complicated to manage all these, uh, these things here. So that's why I came with the idea to, you know, instead of using that, I would do in a very similar way that we normally do for uh, when mocking um, um, in, in unit tests, for example, right? 
let me run this just to show you guys um, what gets created there. I'm just going to stop here after I create the, the mocks. That's why I'm running in debug mode here. Um, So essentially here, before anything, I removed everything that was there. The clear will just delete all the mocks, all the stubs that are created. And then I created two stubs, one uh, successful, another one error. So if we go back to the REST API here and call the get stubs, so we see that we have one um, stub for the success that we will turn Blah, blah, when the name is Rodrigo, and another one for error that will return the error message um, in that case. And we can also just to complete here, I'm just going to show these two cases here. Like it is configured there, blah, blah. If I do um, video here, I'll get the error uh, message here. Okay, um, that was the one of the two last things that I wanted to show. Um, the last thing that I want to talk about is um, the error messages on on the gRPC servers. They can be a lot richer than just the um, code and the message. And we can also uh, create stubs or create mocks with these richer messages. Um, let me first stop here. In order to do this, I will need to start this um, uh, the mock server in another way. Let me just do find where I have it running because it, I don't know if this is too small, guys. I apologize if it is. Um, I need to do one thing is, uh, to, in order to, let me first show the uh, repo. And, before I show this, because this is, um, a, we have to do a bit more, more things here. Um, okay. I have one example here uh, in the fictional service here that head user, I expect to send a name and an age. And in this case, I want to mock an error, but besides the code and the message, I also want to give more, more details here. And the details here is, um, since the details, it can be any, any proto message we can return here. First thing I have to do is uh, tell the server what is the type that I want it to return. Um, I do this by using the import and type. This is very much um, like the import that we do in Go code. So, um, let me see. So I do the import like I did, I would do in a, um, inside a Go file. And I also tell what is the type that I want to return in that error message. So in this case, I'm saying it is a bad request and I want to return some field violations here. In this case, a name and an age, and what is the message for each of these fields violations? Um, how we do? I do. I did this internally. Um, in order to do this, and uh, um, I had to create a mechanism that would um, find a way to know what we are talking about. What is the type that we are creating here? I can go into details uh, another time, but essentially, I create a plugin and that will uh, create an instance of this at a runtime when we invoke um, the creation of this stub for this error message here. 
Okay. Um, one a few things that I found uh, air uh, complicated to do this. I, I found that I needed to build the mock server using this. Um, what is Rigo, I'm sorry to interrupt you. We're slowly yes. approaching the end time. Okay, okay. Okay, how much time do we? Well, it's already past the time, but uh, we can definitely do a few more minutes. Okay, let let me do this. I I'll just leave here. I'm just gonna sh show the uh, this page, which explains how we do the um, how we would do this uh, rich message here. Okay, and I'll share the the link to the the repo so you guys can take a look. Let's then open to questions. I think um, I didn't pay attention to the time. Sorry. So questions, guys. I think um, since we are out of time, I, I will just open to questions. I, I just to wrap it up is is uh, essentially a plugin for the Proto C um, compiler that, based on the Proto buff definition of a service, will generate an, a complete mock that you can use for testing your microservices in GRPC. And one other scenario that we can use here is like. Um, Instead of when, when you start developing and you have other dependencies uh, that are not implemented yet, you can use this to mock these dependencies and while you, you wait for the, the actual implementation to be ready. So this is the purpose of this tool. And yeah. Okay. Question, how have you created a plugin by forking the plugin per go? Yes. Um, Essentially, um, when I send this request to the server, it will on the fly generate a small piece of code that import this guy here and create one instance of the type that I pass here and return it to the caller, which is my uh, the mock server. So this is how I create one instance of this. And the generated Go code that is created on the fly is also compiled on the fly and it essentially I create a um, run, runnable application on the fly there. I don't know if I under um, made myself understood there. <laughs> I'm just going to show the link to the repo here. If you guys have any uh, even suggestions, issues, anything, please uh, reach out. Uh, yeah, that's it, guys. Yeah, thank you very much.